Hello and welcome back to another episode of Psychen Guides to XCOM 2. Today we will return with another 10 tips that I wish I had known when starting XCOM 2 because I want to share some of the knowledge in a different format. As mentioned in the first uh, version of this video, I'm just trying to pass on a couple of really nice tips that might make your life during an XCOM campaign substantially easier. So without further ado, let's jump right into today's 10 tips. Since I don't want to do it alone, I brought Soul Sister Snake with me, triple S as a short acronym, and she's going to share her thoughts and the tips of this time. Tip number one, Sniper's Dead Eye, respectively Dead Eye and also Grappling Hook. Let's start with the Sniper's Dead Eye, a little bit along the lines of the last discussion with the Grenadier. Sniper's Dead Eye has an aim penalty, so it can miss mission objectives. I mentioned it the last time, mission objectives set the hit chance to 100%. Some abilities, like the Dead Eye ability, unfortunately will make you miss mission objectives or at least give you a chance to miss it because the Malice is applied after the 100% hit chance. In Dead Eye's example, that would be minus 15, so an 85% of hitting the target, 15% of missing it. But that's not only tip number one because it would be a rerun of last time. We also have 1B, the grappling hook of the spider suit. Don't sleep on that one, or the snake suit uh, would be a great example of that as well. The grappling hook itself does not count as a classical movement action. So if you have had uh, the chance to already steady your aim with the ability uh, steady hands, you can always use the grappling hook in order to move somewhere else and still use a sniper shot action because you retain all both of your movement points. However, I will say that the grappling hook is triggering Overwatch, so keep that in mind. It is not a free movement action like, for instance, the Icarus suit would be. Tip number two, we're going to take a look at the Sniper's Serial ability. Serial is an ability at the kernel level of Sniper that allows you to regain actions when you are taking a shot. Now here's the kicker that you should be aware of, a couple of interactions between that and Death From Above and a couple of other abilities. Death From Above only always returns one action. Whilst that is okay for the Sniper rifle, it is not enough uh, the chosen sniper rifle is not enough for a normal sniper rifle. Serial always returns two actions back if you had two actions. So that will allow you with a chosen rifle to kick in serial, kill a couple of enemies, whether or not they are in lower uh, elevation doesn't matter in that case. You always gain back both of your actions. Then you can reload and if you're out of autoloaders, uh, you would use one of your actions and you can then even continue to fire uh, with one action left. Mind you, if you started serial and uh, will kill someone with serial with only one action, you will be uh, rewarded only one action back. So a little bit of deep dive into the serial ability. Very good, that brings us to tip number three, the Sniper's Kill Zone ability. Kill Zone always allows overwatch shots even if you do not have skilled long watch. So it is just part of the ability, so even if you get it on other characters, Kill Zone will uh, give them quote unquote uh, squad side. As long as someone can see an enemy and they are moving, then you will trigger. Also, keep in mind, Killzone nicely interacts, by the way, with uh, abilities that allow overwatch shots uh, based on things that are not moving. So a uh, Killzone on a specialist, for instance, is an absolute deadly uh, combination. On top of that, kill zones are persistent. From the time that you initiate the kill zone until the beginning of your next turn, kill zone is exactly that, a kill zone. So, say if you are concealed, you're then kill zoning, starting to trigger the pot, they all get a shot, they hide, some of them might survive for whatever reason. If it is their turn and they move again, then guess what? They trigger kill zone yet again. Pro tip on top of that, it's tip number 3C, if you want. 
uh, as long as you do not move you can even inter move or shoot you can even continue interacting whilst you do have the kill zone so a couple of uh, things there as long as you don't take a standard shot or move you can theoretically give uh, the kill zoning uh, character that might have run out of ammunition a bond ability over then they can use that ability to reload their weapon and they will continue to shoot it even goes as far as you can give a sniper that is kill zoning an action uh, over they use their sidearm as a normal uh, shot for instance lightning hands and then reload and then they continue their zone so a lot of technicalities in kill zone the way it is implemented but if you know them you can make the skill really really work well in your favor Next up, we are looking at tip number four, the Templar's parry and reflect slash deflect ability. You should know that all three of them are actually separate roles. Uh, many of you might not know how the Templar works in detail, but uh, the fact that they are separate roles makes the Templar incredibly tanky, which is a huge advantage. So. If you parry, it's 100% parry against the first uh, things that happen. Then reflect, depending on the amount of focus, can be up to a 60% reflection. And then another roll, if it doesn't reflect, will determine whether it deflects up to 50% uh, chance. All of them are cumulative. After that, uh, dodge will kick in and uh, reduce uh, the critical hits to normal hits, uh, normal hits to uh, essentially uh, glancing hits and then armor will be deducted so there are effectively multiple layers for the templar uh, before they even will be uh, taking damage and if you wonder that is the reason why hogbite is the strongest character in the game because of that mechanic which brings us to tip number five templars parry ability since we just talked about it stacks you might not have known that but if you are attacking then go into parry then shift an ability over via skirmisher a psi operator for the bond mate you can attack again and gain another parry stack the cool part about it is all of them stack on top of each other so voila now you're immune against two attacks instead of one you can even go to the extreme and use a team all around Templar and then pump actions into them to give them multiple parries so that essentially they are deflecting everything. Fun little thought experiment, but it is actually usable in some of the cases because a Mimic Beacon all of a sudden becomes a double Mimic Beacon. And there we go to tip number six, the Templar's Ghost ability. You might not have known that yet, but the Templar's Ghost actually inherits special qualities like Blade Storm, uh, which means that if you do have uh, that on the Templar, the Ghost will simply inherit it and always attack with Blade Storm as well. However, there are a couple of abilities that they don't inherit, non class-like abilities such as the dodge value of the Templar is not inherited. Also, they do not inherit uh, Fortress, so they are unfortunately not immune against the most of the other things. They also do not inherit abilities from items such as the Mind Shield, so keep that in mind when creating it. Additional tip, since we are at tip number six, Quasi's tip number 6b, uh, Void Conduit, which is another ultimate ability of the Templar, removes a cover and disables the target, but still allows the target to be attacked. So it's kind of the best of all of the worlds. Target can't do anything, is losing cover and can be attacked. Pro tip onto that, if you're uh, facing off enemies in high cover with a lot of defense and you have problems hitting them, Consider using Void Conduit and then they just melt away like butter. Which then brings us to tip number seven, the Skirmisher and their Ripjack ability. The Ripjack ability functions just like the Bladestorm ability. If you have seen the first video, there is a lot of overlap. It will uh, trigger and always supersede abilities um, on the enemy's turn. You can hit mutants uh, with it. However, it also suffers from overwatch penalty. So all of that is not new because it's quasi Bladestorm. However, tip number 7b, why it might be new to you, because the strongest ability of the Skirmisher by far is a Combat Presence ability where they can 
not only not to end their turn, but essentially hand over an action to another uh, SWAT member. And many people do not appreciate just how strong that is and uh, take a step at the skirmisher for quote unquote being weak with their uh, Balpap. In reality, the, this ability allows the skirmisher to become another class for one round and on top of that still have an action left over. So great action economy on the skirmisher all around. Imagine a single class uh, basically turning into a ranger and then point blank uh, shooting uh, with uh, the shotgun with a rapid fire. So that's already two shots. And then the skirmisher takes a, another shot afterwards. That in itself is a great turn. I don't know what to say. If you have not given it a try so far, you might want to uh, change your mind on it. Which brings us to tip number eight. This list would not be complete without the quote-unquote skirmisher tank cheese strategy. It's a well-known tactic. In case you are unaware of it, you might want to give it a try. The skirmisher does have the return fire ability that they can theoretically obtain with special training. On top of it, they do have their own ability to shoot back. So if you get both on a skirmisher, great, good for you. You can now pair the skirmisher and essentially let them be the tank. All you need to do is add two specialists to the mix so that they can vice versa use eight protocol every single turn on the skirmisher. Make sure that everybody stays nicely back. You can uh, use, for instance, snipers in that case or generally classes with a really, really long range. And if Advent only can see the skirmisher, they will continue to hit the skirmisher. All you need to do with them is uh, try to get into some sort of cover. Uh, try to use a protocol then hunker down and the skirmisher by sheer force of will will therefore already incur a minus 70 penalty on the enemy uh, give him a couple of poison rounds on top of it to make it even worse and whatever enemy is trying to attack him will get a return fire now i will say that as nice as that strategy is it has its downside on timed missions where you oftentimes cannot pull that off. Which nicely brings us to tip number nine, the Sparks Hunters Protocol, which really is a great ability in itself. Hunters Protocol is an ability that allows the Spark to have a 33% chance individually per every single person in an enemy pack to basically trigger an overwatch uh, shot once they discover the pack. Uh, that makes them uh, one of the best, if not the single best, characters to scout ahead if you're already out of concealment because you can move on to high ground, uh, see the enemies and then trigger uh, all of uh, the overwatch shots individually. Uh, bonus points if you do that together with threat assessment because all of a sudden the spark has an another uh, overwatch ability which will trigger on top and uh, distinctly from the threat assessment allowing for more shots and more hits and another bonus point if you do that and just park the spark and let enemies move into you with its own overwatch that's a third layer of overwatch and all of a sudden every single one of them triggers individually from a hunter's protocol then threat assessment is triggered and then uh, also the normal overwatch is uh, triggered so that's just crazy, the amount of overwatches that you can pull off with that combination. Final tip for today, we are looking at tip number 10, the Sparks Rainmaker ability. Rainmaker is an ability that widens the circle of heavy weapons and is a starter that might not look like a lot, but keep the following things in mind. Rainmaker sticks with higher level uh, grenade launchers or heavy weapon launchers which overall increases the circle of uh, sparks by two which makes the heavy weapons ultra large in their impact range i myself have even on stream uh, killed an entire pack of a sector pod plus four advent uh, um, supporters by simply using a rainmaker uh, blaster bomb 
blasting them off the rooftop everybody took falling damage on top of it and then i used uh, the overdrive ability to completely demolish whatever was left over of that sector pod so that's a class that can eliminate one of the hardest if not the hardest pack in the entire game just by using rainmaker plus heavy weapons also pro tip overdrive as an ability allows you to shoot and use heavy weapons in any uh, um, order that might pleases you so shoot uh, use uh, the heavy weapon and shoot again that all is possible so you should really look into it if you have slept on spark so far you might want to change your mind and that brings us to the end of today's episode have the 10 tips been helpful for you did you learn something today and if so which of the tips was most surprising to you leave a comment down below that really helps the videos and if you want to support the channel consider uh, dropping a like bomb Thanks and see you soon. Bye-bye.